Hey, it's Brian Burns, and welcome to this episode of the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. Got a great, exciting episode for you today. Uh, One of my favorite TV shows, Mad Men. The co-producer of Mad Men is on the show today. He's written a book called Seducing Strangers, How to Get People to Buy What You're Selling. And we, we, we talk about the show, we talk about what works in both advertising and in sales, because our, our sales calls are, are a little bit like an, an advertisement. And for the CMOs out there, we've got to do some advertising, some outbound stuff that paid uh, advertising, and why not learn from the master? This guy, this conversation was so much fun. So many of my interviews I enjoy, but this one was really like, I, I just didn't want to hang up. We had such a great time. It was so interesting. And we, we go through my favorite episode, um, the carousel, where they're talking about this boring little utility to show pictures. But all of a sudden, you know, it brought people to tears. People brought the emotion in. They brought out what the carousel really meant and felt to the client. And everybody got it. How the, how Don Draper communicated that through his own life story. This is a very touching episode. I even get a little emotional during it. I think you're really going to like it. I hope you stick through it. Also, look through the show notes and uh, check out all our favorite uh, partners, especially Prezi, Prezi Business. If you want to send your story via email, you want to give your story and a presentation, PowerPoint, just don't cut it no more. You need Prezi. You need Prezi business. And, and if you're not using that, your salespeople and your marketing people are not conveying the real essence of what's what really works today. Let's get it into the interview with Josh Weldman. Hey, Josh, thanks for joining me today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Josh Weltman. I've uh, spent 25, 30 years um, in advertising, building uh, campaigns and ads for companies such as Carl's Jr., uh, Taco Bell, Pepsi, Microsoft. Of advertising and act as um, an advertising consultant on uh, a show called Mad Men, which was set in an advertising agency in 1960. So uh, for eight seasons or seven seasons, I, I, I did that. And it was doing that and trying to explain to uh, writers and producers and other people working on the show um, how advertising worked uh, from the inside out and sort of what we did to create ads and campaigns that led me to write a book called uh, Seducing Strangers, How to Get People to Buy What You're Selling and uh, open a small, con- or <laughs> I shouldn't say small, uh, someone <laughs> told me that yesterday, open um, a, a booming West Coast consultancy called... Uh, boutique. Um, yeah, well, yeah boutique, that, that's a better word. Uh, boutique consultancy called uh, Walker Weltman that um, helps uh, gutsy CEOs um, use words, pictures, uh, music, and stories to uh, improve inquiry sales market share and margins cool now how'd you get interested in advertising uh it was a parole agreement um no uh, it was <laughs> it was either that or the army <laughs> uh it was that or the army no i i came out of art school i, I i've always been uh visually uh a dwat i could uh, uh, draw well and i went to art school and and um uh my i the first job i got was working on um, the letters page of the LA Weekly. Uh, I, I bounced a guy, a cartoonist, off the page, a guy named Matt Groening, who went on to produce The Simpsons. And uh, But I took over his spot for a, a small time, and for $70 a week, I was creating an editorial cartoon for the LA Weekly. And my dad said, um, you know, I wasn't able to survive, but he said, you know, if you can put an image together, the caption, you can probably get a job in advertising. And, and that led me um, to put a, a, a spec book together and go out and pound the pavement. And uh, uh, my first job was uh, at Tracy Lock LA, which is a defunct agency. It was part of the uh, BBDO, BBDO Omnicom group. And uh, my first assignment was working on um, 
Taco Bell. Wow. And uh, that's how I got into it. So through wor- working a, a, a sort of high pressure uh, retail advertising for a company that knew within 48 hours whether the ad that you put on air was working or not was a, a, a really good and um, I think interesting start. Uh, fast food advertising is is basically a, kind of the speed chess of uh, marketing. Everybody <laughs> who's <laughs> it's a real um, old uh, mature category. I'll put it that way. And everybody in the category knows exactly how many lunches are going to be sold the next day. And the only way to make money and grow is to uh, uh, essentially eat someone else's lunch, figure out how to make a a McDonald's uh, customer your customer. What do you got to do? Wow. And and what kept you out in L.A.? I mean, I, I would think somebody like yourself would be working in Manhattan. Oh, um, I don't, I wasn't that hysterical. I, I, I liked, uh, just sort of doing the work and, and getting the job done. I, I found that, um, when I dealt with people in, in New York, there was sort of a, a level of histronics and screaming that had to be, um, <laughs> that, that was part sort of, of the like process. The pro- yeah. yeah. It was kind of pro- part of the process. You, you sort of, it was like the prologue to actually sitting down and doing the work. And, uh, I, LA is a, um, and I think the West Coast in general is is a little bit more um, open, yeah. you know, and, and less hierarchical. And and I, I did things um, pretty early in my career that that I think um, would have taken me 15, 20 years for for people to even listen. Uh, I, I wrote a campaign for Doritos um, featuring Jay Leno uh, pretty early on. I think about. Uh, eight months, nine months into uh, my advertising career. And um, I remember the creative director, he, w- he didn't want me to go back to uh, New York to present the campaign because he said I was too young and they wouldn't buy it from uh, a person who was a, you know, a 26 year old. Um, so, but he said my voice was low. So uh, he let me present the scripts over the phone to the, you know, the uh, BBDO star chamber, you know, uh, um, kind of thing. And, uh, when, when I heard the laugh coming back over the speakerphone, I, uh, I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that feeling my whole life. I, I knew I had sold the campaign. Now in the agency business, there always seems to be the, the creatives and then the, the people who sell the creatives work. Is that an accurate description of how it works or, um, not, uh, not really. The creatives really kind of have to sell their own work. I, I, I think um, rather than w- what I always uh, the, w- the way we broke it down. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't include my partner at the time in the Doritos campaign was a woman named Chris Boutte, who I have to give credit to. The um, I just had a lower voice than she did, you know, or else. <laughs> but uh, 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 the, <laughs> or else Chris would have read the scripts. Um, uh, the. The idea, I think, is that the account executives in the agency are really there as agents and agents in, in my um, in my view of uh, the creative process are there to set expectations for the creatives. Uh, they're there to set the client's expectations for what the creatives can accomplish with the work. You know, um, then the creatives have to come in and, uh, you know, show the client work that meets or exceeds those expectations or the work doesn't sell, you know. And what was your motivation for writing the book? What was my motivation for writing? Uh, People seem really interested in the advertising and and, um, on the show. And uh, when they found out what I did and, and, um, you know, when I when I would meet people, they would they would say they wanted to to learn more about the nuts and bolts. I mean, the, the television show was a, um, an hour long drama and it, you know, it was like the, the advertising was like the medical stuff on ER, you know, right. it was there to, to help the stories go. It wasn't really what the stories were about. The stories were about the characters, but people were really interested. You know, one of the things, uh, misconceptions I think people have about advertising is, um, that it's really like mind control and lying, you know, and, 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 they, 
and they think that um, you didn't have to sugarcoat it. <laughs> no, you, you know, they're they're. Uh, I never found it to be that way. You know, I, I found that it was more about um, listening and discovering what motivates people. You yeah. know, and as, uh, and when you find that out, it, it's really easy to sort of play it back to them. You know. Uh, but I was never, you know, shouting and yelling and, and trying to get people to, to do something they didn't want to do. It was more, um, kind of listening and trying to figure out what it was people were, uh, were trying to do and, um, how, how you could help them with products and services, you know, now what they were trying to do was, uh, you know, sometimes, um, get all the calories they possibly could in their body as fast as they could for five dollars you know uh and when you think about stuff that way uh, um it's sort of sometimes good sometimes bad whatever uh, you, you try not to help them do bad things but um that you have to think about it the way they do you have to come at it through their eyes now there, there was one one scene that I, I I still think of as the perfect pitch, <laughs> uh, the, the the carousel. I'm sure the that, carousel. That, that, <laughs> does that bring back memories? Yeah, sure. It comes up a lot. Yeah, yeah. Be, because I think the setup was so perfect, and then the execution was just <laughs> you know artistic. It you know it was just perfect. You know, and I keep thinking well, about that when I, I talk to people about when they present their products. Oh, how that works. Yeah, well, it was it was fun that, you know, the, the nice thing on the show is, is that when you're, um, you know, scripting these things, the clients do exactly what you tell them to. You know, so we wanted to it, it, they always they they buy your best work, you know, and and, and you can you, you kind of start with the emotional moment you want to achieve in the meeting and work backwards. Yes. And, uh, that one, um, the first season, uh, Matt asked, uh, he said, I, I, I want to wrap up in the last episode, how I want to let the audience know how Don is feeling about his marriage, his business and his brother's suicide. So, uh, what product would that be, you know? And, um, <laughs> I, and you know, the, it wasn't Doritos. <laughs> it wasn't Doritos. But the 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 thing that it 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 really um, came from, and the reason that we suggested uh, doing a um, uh, a camera or a, a slide projector or something like that, is because I think in in 1998 I was asked to pitch Earthlink, uh, which was you know a, a, a a dial up or a, yeah, yeah it was a dial up ISP at the time, and it was really um, a tough assignment because you know the internet was pretty new at the time, and AOL was the the gorilla in the living room, and and I didn't know that much about it. And doing the research, the thing that you you found about these services is that essentially they had a different benefit for every person that dialed in, you know, there was no one benefit to Yahoo, Google, uh, all these kind of things. And, um, so we, we built a bunch of commercials about personal benefits and, and, uh, people finding what they were looking for. And, and I based one of the, the ads on, um, a friend of mine's father who had, uh, discovered a cure for his brain cancer by going online and by doing this by uh you know by checking out different ways for him to handle this thing he added two years to his life and was able to see his grandson be born you know uh that's quite a benefit it's quite different from going on and, and looking for uh, you know how what's the cheapest i can find a pair of doc martens you know right. that that that's not even the same kind of service kind of thing so the idea was uh, how this comes back to the carousel is we 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 knew or we were looking for what uh, at that time in 1961 would allow Don to use his own life and life story as an example of um, the benefit of the product. And when we, I, I, I found in the uh, New York Times that the carousel was introduced that year. And 
I remembered my father sitting around after dinner, you know, how everyone used to sort through the, the uh, Kodachrome slides and create slideshows and, and stuff like that. And um, I thought that would be the perfect thing that we could, we could put in, you know, if, if, if Don was asked to, to pitch this slide projector, he could use his own story, his own life pictures uh, to explain to the client um, the benefit of the thing. And that, that was what brought that whole thing together. And that's is it. that too much information? No, you know, no, it's not that, enough. But that's how it, 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 is it really. Oh, it's not enough. Okay, that's how it worked. <laughs> well, because I, I I try and help salespeople and marketing people, you know, get at the emotion that their product elicits. Yeah, and work. Yeah, from that, and what everybody else tries to do is go ROI backwards, and it's yeah, uh, yeah. No one's hey, gonna, that that. That's one of my favorite scenes in the show is when uh, Peggy says to Don, she has some comp that she did for an airline and, and she and he says, why do you think this will work? And he and she says, uh, sex sells. And, he's, <laughs> you know, and he says, you know, that's what jerks say about advertising. He says, look at this. And what's the real emotion? What do you feel about um, this thing? And and she digs a little deeper and comes up with the with the solution, but the, yeah, you know, you advertising I, I found is different than entertainment because we can use the client's business needs to kind of hold the work at arm's length. We're not really um, sinking our heart and souls into it the way that people who write television shows do. But unless you're willing to put your heart into it, there's no way you can connect to an audience, you know, whether that's one on one in personal sales or whether it's broadcast or, you, you know, you ha you have to figure out what exactly what you said, what that what the emotional connection is based on to that product. Yes, that's it. That's, a, that's a, the difference between what we call, in a, you know, the benefit and the features, you know. And then the, just the word carousel, you know, the the the, <laughs> the, the, the image of, you know, the child, um, yeah. you know, going through and then, then the cycling through someone's life. And right, and, uh, and the, going the happy, back and forth. And, yeah, the ups yeah. and the downs. And the and then, then you see the client crying or the, <laughs> right? You're like, and you're like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it was uh, there wasn't a dry seat in the house. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. Now, I mean, writing a book is an arduous process, and even trying to take, you know, what you would probably consider art and document it into written words. What was that process like for you? Oh, that was hellacious. I'm I'm an art director, and I I I talk well, and I you know, but. Uh, writing is, is, is so difficult. Um, it, it's, uh, I had two people helping me enormously. Um, one was, uh, my, my old writing partner from the agency days, Chris Boutet helped me edit the essays for the book. And, um, my agent, uh, Jen Joel at ICM, um, was really great when, when we started out writing the book. Uh, she said before I wrote every essay, um, she's, what was it? Uh, two words, um, who cares, yeah. you know, um, before you sat down. And, and when, when she gave me that, uh, she said, that's the way you got to come at it. Cause there were uh, probably another half dozen essays that didn't make it into the book ideas and thoughts and stuff like that, but they did not pass the who cares test. I really wanted, um, each, essay and, and each idea to, to mean something, uh, important, uh, to people, you know, and, and after doing that and, and breaking it out and sort of outlining it and, uh, that sort of thing, it was really just sitting down every day. And, um, Annie Lamont has a great, uh, book called bird by bird, basically, you know, knocking, knocking the chapters down, knocking one at a time. And uh, after a couple months, we had a book. Yeah. And did you 
storyboard it or did you just grind, <laughs> grind it out That's, or did you? Um, no, I, I, I work better at, um, from a tight outline, you know, yeah. and what we did was uh, we created a pretty tight outline of, of how to explain this idea of um, sort of how messages work and how different types of messages lead to different sorts of business results. That was the main thesis of the book. And, uh, you know, we needed to do a little bit of work up front to explain some basic concepts. Uh, you know, the, the front of the book is, you know, what's advertising there for? What are you trying to do? Uh, you're not, uh, I don't think you're trying to dupe people. Uh, I don't think you're trying to uh, twist their arm. I think what you're really trying to do is set expectations so that products and services can exceed those meet or exceed those expectations and make for happy customers. I don't think that um, the products alone can both set expectations for themselves and exceed those expectations. And I think that's that's where happiness comes from. You know, when uh, what was the big word last year or two years ago in sales? It was uh, delight. You yeah. know, and I think. I think delight is uh, just exceeding expectations by just a little bit, you know, and that's that's what we enjoy when we pick up a product and it does something a little bit more than than we were counting on or it works a little bit better. We love that, you know. Right. And today, you know, a lot of companies are talking about experience as opposed to, right. um, you know, functionality. But. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't really know what they mean by that. <laughs> I, hear the word, I hear the word a lot. Yeah. You know? I guess um, you have to yeah. be a millennial. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, it, it was an experience when we were doing it before, you know? Um, kind of. <laughs> exactly. That's it. It's just a different word, yeah. I guess. Now, yeah. what, what is the process you take your clients through? What is the process? Um, the when you, question, when you yeah. sit down uh, with, you know, a prospective client, you know, yeah. and let's say you, you, you're grooving where you, where you don't need their business <laughs> and um, they're, they're just kind of picking your brain. They like you. They want you. Um, well, how, we, one of the things is the first thing is trying to figure out what it what exactly um, they're trying to do, you know, I, in the book, I say, uh, all right, um, we're, we're meeting back here a year from now. Uh, we, we, after we've done something together and we're, uh, we're busting open a bottle of champagne and we're toasting. Um, what are we, to, what happened? How yeah. did we know it was time to stop working and open that bottle? You know, what were we trying to achieve? And you, you try at, at what I try and do is to get, people to sort of project and see success in their mind's eye and tell me what happened. Yeah. Um, then I can work backwards from that. All right. If uh, we were trying to uh, go public or we were trying to introduce uh, a client of mine introduced a, a new electric vehicle last night, um, you know, uh, that, that was exciting. Um, or we're uh, introducing a new product or, or, or burger or something like that. What's it going to do? You know, are we seeing lines in front of the restaurants or is that what we want to happen? Are we, uh, you know, getting a 40 percent mix in the in the uh, product mix or whatever? Usually what you have to do, because you can't, it's really impolite to say it, is um, you're trying to figure out what what the bonus is based on, you know, of your, <laughs> of your client, you know, cause uh, yeah. whatever, uh, whatever's going to make them happy. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you haven't figured that out by the time you stop working, it, you, you know, um, you're going to go through two or three rounds before you go, Oh, I get it. Your, yeah. your, uh, your bonus is tied to, you know, um, market sales increases, or market yeah. share or this, or a combination of both or, or whatever it is. But essentially what you're trying to do is get on the same side of yeah. the table. You know, if your bonus is based on that, then my work's going to be based on that, you know, um, or I want my work to be based on that. Cause so you know that 
I'm trying to help you achieve success. It, it, it I, I guess what, where I'm, I'm trying to make it human. I'm trying to figure out who is the person that I'm going to help succeed before, uh, I start doing work or start thinking about things. And I'm sure you've run into clients where you, you didn't click. Um, Oh what, yeah. Sure. And, how, and <laughs> what, what caused that? Did they not, um, um was it just hmm. personality or was it, they didn't know what they wanted or what they wanted was unrealistic or. Usually it's, uh, they either don't know what they want or they, um, don't have the, uh, resources or budget necessary to, to get what they want. I had, you know, um, what, what my grandfather used to call it, uh, champagne taste with beer money yeah. is, um, is a tough one, but I had a client once, uh, say to me that they needed to advance in all directions at the same time. <laughs> and, and I told him, I, I accidentally did this in front of his boss because I didn't realize it just came out of my mouth. But I said, I, I've never heard a better definition of holding still in my life, <laughs> you know, and um, the next day we came back the agency came back and the guy was gone. Um, so that helped, you know, that got him out of the way, but uh, there, there were, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's trying to do too many things at, at once or having, I guess, preconceived notions about, uh, your clients it, 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 or, or, or your customers. I don't like people who don't like their customers. That, that tends to be, uh, the thing that causes me to, to not, um, get along because they, they, they come at the process of selling or advertising with the idea that they're manipulating lab rats, you know, or they're given like corn pellets to, um, uh, pigeons, you know, that they're, they're, they're poking at the brains of lesser beings. And I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and who, or what type of company is the right match for your agency? Oh, um, I think uh, CEOs who are excited about doing something um, dangerous, dangerous to their industry or dangerous to their company. I think we like, I tend to get along with people who like to roll the dice, you know, who want to shake things up. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're great at, Let's just stay the course. We're growing at, you know, 2.5%. And I really don't want to make waves. I, I think going back to that, um, those initial years of mine of uh, this is a big game of risk, you know. And if we just, if I'm not the leader in the category and things go on the way they're going, I'm going to die. I have to figure out how to move up um, the latter. Uh, I have to figure out how to take customers away from competitors. You know, I, I'm not, I guess the, the, the answer is I'm not a big fan of organic growth. Right. I like, um, disruption. competition. I, yeah, I like disruption. I like, um, uh, Pepsi versus Coke. I like, um, you know, Apple versus Microsoft. I like looking at, uh, the big guy and saying, how am I gonna, um, make the leader in the category. Um, how am I going to make that CEO and marketing director's life a living hell tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, like a Elon Musk would be a good, uh, client of yours. I would love to, uh, yeah. Yeah. To meet him. <laughs> Except I already have an electric car client. So, uh, no, he, he's my, <laughs> I, he, I consider him an ally. Um, yeah, because he's going out and, and sort of uh, breaking ground on this uh, sort of new territory. Cool. So, where can people find your book and learn about oh, your, um, your agency and what you're up to? Uh, people can find the book at um, Amazon. Uh, it's called "Seducing Strangers: um, How to Get People to Buy What You're Selling." Uh, they can type in um, Walker Weltman, and uh, we should come up. That's how they can get in touch with me. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that interview. That was one of my favorites. Uh, 
great TV show, great guy, really smart, really focused, really understands the pieces of what make what it takes to get a message across and how to sell products and seduce people. Uh, check out his book, Seducing Strangers. It's out on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the places. Uh, I, got, I got it. It hasn't arrived yet, but I can't wait to get my hands on it and get into it. Uh, I love the idea. It's a, my favorite TV show, and it was just a joy to talk with him. Also, please make sure you're checking out our partners, Prezi Business at Prezi.com, uh, Discover Org. They're doing a lot of great research on the both the marketing and sales side. Uh, Nudge.ai, I've got the free course uh, at B2Brevenue.com. Uh, just put in the coupon code NUDGE and it's all yours for free, as well as a free course on LinkedIn and how to put out a LinkedIn profile that will make you look professional. If you're in B2B and you don't have a LinkedIn profile and you're not active on LinkedIn, you're missing out. It's the place to be. <laughs> it's got its issues, but it's the place to be. Also, I've got... Uh, Two great courses that have been really rocking. Uh, one is how to get a meeting with pretty much anybody. Start the conversation, get the meeting. Uh, I show you a very natural, human, uh, humanistic way of getting into companies, getting a conversation started, and not acting like a salesperson. Also, how do you close the complex sale? But, hey, we're in the middle of Q2. Not the middle, the beginning of Q2, but the year is flying by. And if you don't know how to close those deals, they're not going to close. So just think about it. Imagine it's December 31st. Do you want to be way above your number or scrambling? It's up to you. That's it. Appreciate you listening. Please tell one person this week about the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast and tell your salespeople to be listening to the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling Podcast. Connect up with me on LinkedIn, Brian G. Burns on LinkedIn, same on Twitter, and also Maverick Method on YouTube. Lots of funny stuff there, lots of instructional free training on YouTube.